Yeah. Ready. Okay, that is Indiana Jones. That's Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. That's Indiana Jones. Uh, Indiana Jones. That's in. I want to say Han Solo, but I know it's not. It's Indiana Jones. That's the Doctor. All right. The Ninth Doctor. Uh, ninth Doctor. That is the Ninth Doctor. Wolverine. 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 It's Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter, my life. Uh, James Bond. James Bond. James Bond, yeah. Flash. That's the Flash. Flash! Dean Winchester. Dean Winchester. The guy from Supernatural? Dean Winchester. What companies made their apparel? I don't know. What? I never really considered that. I don't know. They usually have really obscure names and I never remember them. You did. Those unsung heroes, like he'll never be famous, but yet all the famous people are wearing his clothes. He's like a dork product. Instead of like the red carpet, he's like the dork carpet. We need to, we need to invert this somehow and get all these creators of all this stuff that we love. Like the Star-Lord jacket. Who made that jacket? designers have many different vendors at you know their fingertips we can't do this alone it I always say it takes a village this was the first jacket I ever designed and made jackets for 25 years, got a little bit tired of working for other people, wanted to do something on my own, and preferably in the apparel side of the business, and I uh, wanted to get involved in making something that was quality orientated. So I thought this is a very good fit to, to um, take um, the leather business on and, and um, got into it and have been doing it ever since. went to college at uh, Colf's Leather Sellers College, which uh, was a guild of leather sellers. It had nothing to do with leather, really. In my early years, uh, I was in the police force. was allocated to Chartwell and push Winston Churchill around when he was alive, which was a great, uh, a great thing in my life. Then I left the police force to go into the leather business. I wasn't very good policeman. I wasn't. No. They, they actually did a report on me that said this officer performs his duties entirely to his own satisfaction, which wasn't very good. So uh, yeah, so I left. I, I did uh, nine years of basically as a detective, but uh, I was not very good. So I, I'm much better at making and selling leather coats. Yeah. Henry Huntsman and Sons, started by Henry Huntsman in 1849 initially as a britches maker. So all of our history is within military tailoring, equestrian tailoring. So if you look through all our incredibly old ledgers, you see mostly it's filled with a lot of women, surprisingly a lot more women and men who are all ordering kind of military uniforms, but particularly you know riding habits, riding all, all kind of gear that they could get so they could you know, for equestrian purposes. Your appearance is, is the first thing. They say it takes 0.2 seconds or four, I think, for someone to formulate an opinion about someone. That's what I, I was always told my mother, judge a man on his shoes. It's the first thing you should look at. But certainly, whether we like it or not, you, you, whether you want to or not, you make an impression of someone almost immediately. If somebody is dressed sort of really badly or somebody else that's dressed really well, whether or not you consciously think it you'd, you'd probably have a sort of a difference of opinion on them like initially certainly sort of you only get one chance to make a first impression and you know if, if, if people ask me so what do you do you know I always the first after explaining what I do I say have you seen Kingsman and almost everyone has said yes. Matthew Vaughan came in as, a, as an 18 year old boy and kind of was so inspired by this place and by the suits that he promised that he'd always make a movie about it always have this as the kind of HQ for 
for a spy movie. I suppose it's that kind of uniformity in that they are a secret agent, secret being the, the operative part of the, the title, in that they can kind of blend in with, with a crowd of people or whatever. They tend to, they tend to not be countryside-based spy thrillers. They tend to be based in the city where there's a lot of people wearing suits and sort of they, this kind of the, the James Bond sort of sort of heartthrob womanizer sort of thing and the old sort of like women love a man in a suit. And from a distance I spotted him and you know his top hat and his tails and I just thought oh my goodness he looks so dashing. I know I always wanted to dress like Wonder Woman. I just thought she was the coolest coolest woman in the world and I always dressed like her at every party kind of growing up. Uh, Catwoman as well. I guess they own it, you know, and if it's done well, then it's part of them. If it's done poorly, then the costume wears them, which is bad. You know, you don't want to look like you're overwhelmed by what you're wearing. You want to feel very integrated, and it's also, it, it, but it's, there's so many layers to it as far as the film, what type of film you're going for, um, who you get as your actor. Sometimes it comes together perfectly and it's just magical. My earlier, when I early things I worked on was the early Batman films and Michelle Pfeiffer was, first it was Annette Bening and she got pregnant so she was out and then they got Michelle Pfeiffer who walked in that role and to, to me to date she's the most powerful Catwoman, most iconic, beautiful, sexy, however you want to say it, Catwoman. That just came together perfectly between the design and her together in that film was just flawless. You know, having to work for a living, trying to hold the job, some lasted a day, some lasted a month and I realized I couldn't hold a normal job. So I got serious probably when I was about 21, 22, meaning I needed to do something other than you know, whatever I was doing. So I went to a makeup school like a lot of people do. The best thing it did for me is I met people like-minded, which is networking, which is, is the way to do things. Didn't learn a lot as far as my trade, but I, learned, I met people. So that helped me get my first job. And then you learn more working that you do in the school, so I learned as I went through other artists. Uh, my first job was sculpting dinosaurs in Orange County for his company called Dynamation for three years. Eventually it ran its course. I, I was a little loose cannon when I was younger. I'm very tame now. You know, yeah. So when that ended, I, I developed a lot more skills and then I eventually got into film doing work on creatures and different films like that and making monsters and gremlins and then slowly when I got my opportunity on Batman then the costume world opened up and that just seemed like a better fit so I started doing pushing more in that world and less in creatures monster world and then I became one of once I got to sculpt Batman the first I think it was the second film I got known as the guy who sculpted Batman so kind of opened up worlds for like on X-Men and and uh, Fantastic Four and Daredevil, all these films started opening up to me and I became one of the go-to guys. So I was a, a freelance artist, a freelance guy who would help build things for people and I was known early on, I think I was pretty in charge when I was like 25 or 26 of, actually no, at Dynamation I was in charge too and I was 22 or 3. Somehow I could run shows or projects, I was a good orchestrator. I could pick a team, like in sports, but I'd know who to pick and how to put them, where to put them. I didn't have a huge ego. I think that helped, so I didn't think I was the man, I just thought I know who is good and how to make something come out great. So I would always look good because at the end it would be great. Well, I think all aspects, whether it's production design, costume design, um, sound, hair and makeup, it's all important and it's about creating a character. And we all work together um, as a team to collaborate and help, you know, bring these stories and characters to life. When we get the script and we're looking at the story and each one of the characters and who these people are, we're telling their stories through, through their clothes. We're showing a character arc through their clothes and motivation and all of those things. Um, that's what our job is, is to tell a story. You know, where other departments, you know, they do it through sets or, like I said, with the production designer or hair and makeup. We, we're using clothes as a tool to help build these characters from the ground up, tell their motivations and their backstory. Things like leather jackets kind of, I suppose, have a kind of biker sort of influence. 
like people that smoke and sort of take that sort of little risk and ride motorbikes and there's kind of like that sort of element of danger, the sort of like bad boys. We forgot the most famous jacket I made. What's that? Was the X-Men, X-Men 2 jacket. Was it X-Men 2, X-Men 3, sorry. X-Men 3 jacket. Well, I mean, they're all favorites, but I've done Arnold Schwarzenegger. I did a lot of um, stuff for Arnold in Sixth Day. I did a lot of stuff for him personally, him and his entourage. Um, he was a very interesting um, person, very polite person. Um, I did a lot of uh, leathers for the 3,000 Miles of Graceland with Kevin Costner. Two of the most favorite uh, women that I've done leather for was Jennifer Connelly. The day the earth stood still, we made that green jacket for her. Um, Jessica Beale in, um, in uh, Blade 3, I believe it was. We did all the leathers for her, and we made the cape um, jacket for Wesley Snipes in that movie. So, uh, but she was very, very nice, and we made all her leathers. It was a combination of leathers and Cordura for that movie, and she, she was very, very nice. I, in fact, I didn't know who she was when she came in here. <laughs> Jackets for, for various films, uh, including obviously Indiana Jones. But the first one was Robert Mitchum, uh, Wings of War. They needed a flying jacket for him, and uh, he's a great big man, gorilla chest, gorilla arms, and uh, they needed the flying jacket the next day, and we did it, and then they said, what else can you do? We went, what do you want? So they said, well, we've got, we're doing a Dudley Moore film called Santa Claus. We need the gnomes outfits, or the workers. Yeah, we did that. Then they said, can you make water jackets? We said, what for? So, so we're doing a film called Das Boat, German uniforms. Yeah, we could do that, bosh. And they said, right, okay, anything leather, we, we can do. So then we did the first film with, uh, with um, Harrison Ford, which is a um, Hanover Street, where we made his flight, his, uh, his, his jacket, which is how we came to be back on with Harrison Ford with, uh, with Indiana Jones. Um, and then we just rolled on from there with the Bond films, Star Wars, first lot of Star Wars, the second lot of Star Wars, Aliens 1, Aliens 2, Aliens 3. I've been very lucky, you know. I mean, when uh, you know we were doing the costumes, the, the you know we're lucky to get on the Bond films, um, but uh, we're very lucky with with uh, Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones has made me money basically, and um, it was never nobody. The concept was never it was going to be a B film, and nobody ever thought that it was going to be a big success. Uh, so they weren't that fussed about it, and we went down there and we tried the jackets on him, and they said, "Yeah, we like this bit, we like that bit." Well, well, well go away, put it together. Come back the next day with the the mock-up. Um, yeah, that's okay. Just alter this, alter that. Bang, away we go. And then, of course, you know, then it became a a, a cult film, you know. Yeah. To say, how do you write a a memorable, you know, iconic song or, or artwork? It's a little more elusive than that. It's part of its feeling. I think for each person, it's a different, a different reason. I think that they they are drawn to these characters for very personal reasons. I think it just there's people that it touches. I mean, that cosplay world, which is getting bigger and bigger. I mean, they're influenced by it, obviously, but they want to dress up and go to conventions or hang out with their friends. My show, which is uh, Agents of Shield for Marvel, we have amazing fans on the show, and. I've gotten to meet a lot of them, and they're really great about reaching out. And they tag me every time they cosplay one of the characters, they'll tag me on Instagram so I can see it. And I always say, even on Twitter, it's like if you're going to dress up like somebody for Halloween or one of the cons, please you know, make sure you send pictures because I want to see it. And so they're really good about doing that. How often do they reach out to me? Every day. <laughs> and it's great. I love having an open dialogue with them. Request every night. I mean, you just see while we've been sitting here, there's ten parcels gone out. There's ten jackets, ten costumes have gone out today, um, and of course we've got Elvises as well. So we've got about uh, twenty Elvis impersonators that we make their costumes for. So I somebody come in one day and said, you know, can you make an Elvis? You know, you make costumes. Can you make me an Elvis costume? Said, yeah, yeah. Then he went and told somebody else. Then he went to an Elvis convention, and all of a sudden we had all these Elvises ringing up. You know, I want one, I want one. And they're funny. And they come and try on. They get in front of the mirror. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we do it. We do it as a regular. Every week, there's one or two. Yeah. People don't even people don't know don't recognise a jacket. You still think to yourself, no, I've got this jacket, and they're not turning around and saying, oh, he's wearing an Indiana Jones jacket. The Indiana Jones fans will, and it's by far the most popular thing that we sell. Even I've got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the fans, one year we had it here at my house. We had a little uh, European, what they call a European convention, and we had these people come from from Germany, from Spain, Italy, uh, Norway, Denmark, and they all came for the weekend to stay here. Right? And, was, and we sort of the night before we'd given traditional fish and chips, and we'd had fun and everything else. But uh, seven o'clock in the morning, I got these slurps, slurps, slurps. slurps. What's going on? Seven o'clock in the morning, and we went downstairs. Of course. The Germans are in the swimming pool, aren't they? It's seven o'clock in the morning. And then some of them, they never had the swimming costumes. And uh, they, so they decided to go to, up the road to the supermarket and buy swimming costumes. I mean, imagine the people in the supermarket when about 15 people dressed as Indiana Jones walk in and they're all buying swimming costumes, uh, <laughs> clearing them out of swimming costumes. And everybody's going, who are they? Where are they from? You know, ooh, ooh, what is this? You know. <laughs> The only, the, I get a lot of phone calls um, about particular jackets, but the one that we did the most was, was the, um, the X-Men um, 3 jacket. No, I've never had, um, I've never really had anybody um, saying misrepresentation or people trying to say that, you know, they are us or, uh, no, I've never, I've never. Sure, not a ton of it, but yeah, one once in a while, it's, it's a, uh, one time I got a guy red-handed, it was awesome. I was actually working on a film in Vancouver and some guy was brought up from LA and he was chatting up some babe, some chick. And uh, you know, I'm in the room working and I hear him talking about all these things he's done and I'm like, you know, fine, whatever, I'm just working. And then he said something about Planet of the Apes. And then I perked up because I was like, okay, I know Planet of the Apes, I worked on that. I'm thinking to myself. And he's talking about how he did the armor for it. And I'm like, thinking, oh really? And she's like very impressed, you know, all this. And then finally, I, after, I let him go for a while. And then after a while, I'm like, I go, that's very interesting. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, that's really interesting because I'm pretty sure I did the armor for Planet of the Apes. And he was like, and then he just backed up a few steps and he said, uh, the armor for the horses. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't do that armor. Like, who cares about that? <laughs> Kingsman is something that quite a lot of you, you can see our sign is still up outside and, and it really has travelled the world. That movie, we had a woman from South Korea come in a couple of months ago who one life ambition, she said, was to come in and be in the Kingsman fitting room where the movie was filmed and she burst into tears when she walked in because was, she was just so happy she couldn't believe that she'd made it in. And you know, people come in and have photos. Someone once asked me if they put their hand on the glass with the, with the floor drop like it did in the movie. And we had another guy who said he'd watched the movie a hundred times and knew all the words to it. There were a couple of girls the other day who had printed out photos of characters from the cast and put them on a stick and were standing outside the shop with the faces over theirs. <laughs> But you have to understand, uh, to be in this business as long as I've been in this business, 25 years, you've had to love it. I love clothing. That's how, why I got into it. That's why I do it. And I still enjoy it. And there's not a day that goes by that I regret coming to work or wanting to come to work. The days pass very quickly and it's always very gratifying and it's always very interesting. For anyone who's aspiring to be a costume designer out there, just do it have no fear you know I, I always say it's like if you're in college right now and this is what you're studying then just build your references start studying art photography um, fashion um, anything that's important to you to sort of build up you know a knowledge that you can draw on later when you are creating a character because you never know where that's going to come from right now it's cool um, I also like doing monuments. I do some of those from time to time, bronze sculpture. So, you know, it's great a way to make a living for now, and it's fun, and it's a challenge, which I like. I like challenges. I like problem solving. And at some point, this may run its course, and I'll do something else. I've been in this industry for at least 30 years, um, 10 of it on my own. I think your time spent on this planet, hopefully it's spent well. And so when I take on a project or do something, I hope I put 
as much as I possibly can at the moment in. I try not to phone things in or just do enough. I hate the word, that's good enough. It drives me crazy. So, so to leave a mark, whether, you know, whether it's in public work or in film or whatever it is, is fine with me, just whatever that is. And I think time spent here, try to spend it wisely.